Now I'd like to bring in uh, my good friend Paul Hawkshurst from Canon uh, over video link for a discussion uh, where we'll talk in a little bit more detail about some of the most uh, salient features of the new camera. So the C70, it seems like uh, really uh, an interesting, uh, it, the body and the, the design seem to take cues from both the DSLR and the recent mirrorless bodies that Canon has been producing, as well as the whole sort of cinema EOS DNA going all the way back to the original C300 and C100 Mark I. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the philosophy behind the, uh, the choices or, or how the body may have evolved during development? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you pretty much nailed it right there. I think the, the concept behind it was to, uh, ergonomically speaking, uh, take these mirrorless camera shapes or you know something uh, similar to them um, and but cram them full of features from from the cinema EOS line you know the right. the imaging prowess of the cinema EOS crammed into a, a DSLR uh, type body right um, just to you know try to get a smaller footprint in the cinema EOS world but try you know and not to totally skimp on on features that you're used to from cinema EOS. That was a really important part of it. Um, right, yeah. and it seems to have all of the the kind of mainstay features that we're all used to with the similar uh, columns of buttons on the operator mm -hmm. side, if, if if you could call it the operator side, <laughs> uh, since it's probably not a camera yeah, right. <laughs> that will go on the shoulder a, a lot. Yeah. Maybe. Although I'm sure people will develop rigs to shoot it a bunch of different ways. Um, but like, for instance, the motorized ND filters are, are mm -hmm. present, even though we're using, this camera is using the RF mount, which yeah. is so much uh, less, less deep or so much shallower than the, uh, the uh, standard EF mount. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're looking, the RF mount is, is about 25 millimeters uh, less than the EF mount. So that's, you know, that's a lot of space to lose to, to put stuff inside there. Um, and just the fact that they, they were able to get the full ND system uh, into that is pretty incredible. And, uh, and as you may have noticed, it's, it's fast. It's, it goes in and out really quickly. Uh, one of the things about the cinema EOS cameras, you always see the NDs come in or like with the C100s, so you have to use the dial to put it right. in yourself. Right. Um, and this one, they just boop, boop. In and yeah, out. super uh, fast. Yeah. Um, I also noticed that the camera starts up. I mean, like, in as almost like a, a consumer electronic piece of consumer <laughs> electronics equipment, like a, you know, like a, a regular camera, so to speak. Like it's just instantly right. on. It seems like. How how fast is the yeah. Start? Um, I mean, I haven't clocked it, so I'm gonna say, but I. You know, I'm pretty sure it's the fastest uh, boot up of any cinema EOS one. At least of, I tested, I actually went through and I tested all of them <laughs> after I got this camera. Yeah. To see, you know, it's like, oh yeah, this one definitely pops on and so fast. And I think, I think it's important. It's something that um, the cinema users should really be demanding. They want, you know, you should be able to turn your camera off and then pop it back on and right. be ready to go right away. You shouldn't right. have to wait for, for long boot up times or anything like that. So that was really exciting for me when I saw that with this camera. Yeah, especially in like a, if you're shooting a dock and, and maybe, you know, you've, you've, you're trying to be surreptitious, you know, you turn the camera off and like swing it around the back. I mean, you could, this is like a camera you could, you could take anywhere and, and I don't think you would, others would probably not really see it as a, you know, a top shelf uh, digital cinema camera, which, which it is. It, right. Uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. It seems it shares the same Super 35 format sensor with the C300 Mark III? Yeah, so yeah, you're absolutely right. It's the Super 35 millimeter uh, dual gain output sensor. Right. So it's the same one that we're using in the C300 Mark III, the one that um, we've kind of been making a big deal about uh, for a while because uh, the dual gain output is, is kind of the real deal. People seem to have responded really well to it. And um, that's going in this, in this camera and uh, it works amazingly. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and so we could accept, uh, expect a similar, um, you know, like amazing amount of dynamic range, like on the order of 16 or more stops, just like with that camera. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, 
So down the line, because you have, you know, um, you have both the Canon Log 2 and the Canon Log 3. So right. your dynamic range performance, if you're used to the C300 in that regard, so C300 Mark III, you mm-hmm. should ex- be able, you should expect the same. Wow. So, yeah. That's amazing. And, uh, and the price point, um, I haven't, at this point, as this is being mm-hmm. shot, which is uh, a little bit before the, the camera's availability, I haven't actually right. seen a price. Is there, is there one that you're comfortable talking about? Since everybody yeah, else know by the time this is live. By the time, right. So, you know, we're looking at, we're looking at uh, $54.99. Wow. Um, you get a, a BPA-30 battery of it. That's when something bring up is it uses the same BPA batteries that the right. C300 and the C500 Mark II uses. Um, wow. But battery life on them is incredible. And I'll tell you this just as a personal anecdote. I use the BPA-60, which is the extended life battery. Um, so I had a fully charged BPA 60. I put it on the camera and, um, because it's two card slots, I was able to, um, hot swap in and out SD cards. So I had one shot wow. that went and on one battery, I was able to go for about seven hours and 15 minutes. Holy cow. Of one shot, just straight shooting. Wow. Um, you know, and so that's, that's something also that I think a lot of people will be interested in, especially if they're wanting to integrate a camera into their already into their workflow or their production company, or if they need a camera, say they're using a, a C300 Mark III as their A camera, but they want uh, a B camera that they're going to stick somewhere in the rafters or something and let it just roll all day long. This right. is definitely a, a possibility. Um, yeah. So I think that's pretty exciting. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I remember, you know, like I used to have the, the original C100 Mark one and that, that was also like, a real sipper. It would, it, you could, you could almost shoot all day on one, mm-hmm. one battery that was just the one that was flush with the back of the, of the body. So yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and so many different features. Uh, we, we talked about like the built-in NDs, but this camera mm-hmm. also does some enhanced, obviously a big thing uh, is that it's using the RF mount, the, the shallow flange right. depth, uh, full frame mirrorless mount. Obviously this is a, mm-hmm. a super 35 format sensor. Um, right. but th- there's a new EF to RF adapter that addresses the fact that many people, uh, that mm-hmm. might be really interested in this camera probably often may have a lot, a large library of full frame EF glass that they would want to put on this camera. Yeah. So this is, so, you know, we, we already have, uh, several flavors of EF to RF adapters, um, and those all work well, but. This is an adapter that was kind of made specifically for this camera. Mm. Um, it will work on other cameras, but it was made kind of with this camera in mind. And um, it's a, an EF to R speed booster. Mm. And so the thing about this adapter, what it's going to do is you can take your EF lenses. So take, take your full frame lenses, right? It's going to retain the field of view of those lenses right. onto the Super 35 sensor. Right. So if you are a person who's really used to shooting full frame stuff and you understand the nomenclature of full frame in field of view, um, your 35 millimeter full frame is going to retain that field of view, even though you're shooting on a super 35 sensor. Right. Wow. Um, and not only that, though, because of that, um, because it's concentrating the light rays, uh, you're getting one additional stop. So it's a speed booster as well. So you, all those lenses, you're getting a one stop for all of your EF glass. Wow. So if you have like an older uh, 24 to 70 F2.8 um, uh, EF lens mm-hmm. uh, that now is effectively an F2, mm-hmm. essentially, when it's on the camera? Yeah. yeah. And you retain that same field of view. It's not cropped or appear, it doesn't appear zoomed in. Right, right, right. So it's no longer like a 50 millimeter is not going to be the, the 50 millimeter that you're used to for Super 35. Right. It's going to be the 50 millimeter that if you're a full frame shooter, you know, as 50 millimeter. So, right. Yeah. The classic sort of the classic. You know, normal mm-hmm. uh, lens perspective. Wow. Exactly. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's uh, the, the mounting, there's some mounting hardware that, that comes with the adapter that makes it super, it's like super sturdy. And it's really almost like part of the body once you, once you uh, attach those little 
arms that go on either side. Yeah, and that's and that's what I was speaking to of when I was saying the mount was kind of made for those cameras that has the uh, it actually screws in it, it you know you screw it in like a normal adapter into the mount mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. you have those those little flanges that attach and screw into the camera body uh, and those just increase the sturdiness of the mount so you won't be losing um, supposedly with that you won't be losing any anything by using that adapter in terms of stability wow no wow. that's great um yeah i mean also uh and then in conjunction with the uh, you know there's a growing uh family of rf mount mm -hmm. lenses that you know i look like a natural uh, fit like i i have uh i have the 35 millimeter f 1.8 r oh yeah which has uh, it's a it's an image stabilized lens, and I gather there's mm -hmm. like some uh, with an RF lens on the camera. There's like an enhanced uh, some stabilization or more communication between the lens and the body. Yeah, yeah, and that was kind of the one of the big things about the RF mount in general is that there's more uh, it's more communication between the lens and the body when it comes to image stabilization. Right. So when you have a camera like this that has a already a very strong uh, electronic image stabilization that's the same pedigree from the, the C300 Mark III and the C500 Mark II, mm -hmm. um, but you combine that with the communication that it receives from the RF lenses, it just hones in to make a, a kind of a better image stabilized experience overall. Awesome. There's also an additional mode, coming talking about image stabilization, there's additional mode on this camera that is not on the C300 Mark III or the C500, where it's basically, it's a super 16 crop, but what it's doing is it's using all of the area uh, from the 4K sensor for uh, purely for image stabilization. Huh. So if if that's something that, if you have a non a non R lens or you're adapting the lens for PL or something like that, right. and you're fine with shooting 2K, um, you can pop into that super 16 crop mode and you'll have absolutely amazing image stabilization because it's using wow. so much of that sensor area yeah, yeah. stabilization. Oh, that's definitely something to try. Like, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of film schools I know still have, you know, super 16 prime and oh, yeah. zoom glass. And so with mm -hmm. the, the right, probably a third party adapter, you could, you could realize that, you know, kind of bring those lenses, you know, up to up to the present and and actually kind of get new functionality out of them that would be really cool. yeah one of my favorite zoom lenses of all time is a super 16 it's actually a canon the canon oh, sure. uh, famous uh, eight eight to 64 right super 16 uh zoom lens and i would love to to play around with that on that would be awesome one of these cameras yeah. yeah um i'm also really impressed by the the touch screen not just the touch screen which we mm -hmm. We've kind of had on uh, a few different um, Canon cameras, you know, mm -hmm. starting with the C200 and then the EOS R. But this one has a really great sort of um, contextual touch menu that allows you to get in and change yeah. really quickly and easily. Uh, and I think you have one, you have one set up there that maybe we, you could walk us through like a few of the, the menu interactions. Yeah, I can pop this over here um, to it, but yeah, so it's we're calling it the the direct touch menu, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean it's it's kind of true to its name. It's placing a lot of the the higher level functions uh, directly onto the touch screen, um, and it's really actually it's one of the things that I found really really nice about the camera because um, well let me show it to you real fast. Let's cool. uh, yeah let's jump on over here to the camera. And you'll see, you should see all my information here. Yep, we're seeing the status screen. overlays. You're, yeah. see, you're seeing the, the full blown uh, LCD display information right. everywhere. Yeah. Um, but down in that, in that lower uh, left-hand corner there, you'll see the little finger in the touch box. So I'm gonna touch that on the LCD screen right now. And it's gonna pull up on, along the bottom there, all right? So now all of those functions along the bottom, I can select them and choose. So my ISO, if I change that, tap that and I can scroll it, hmm. you know, to wherever my ISO is. I can also register three quick ISOs. Oh, wow. Or I could just, you know, tap that and jump right to it. Hmm. Um, your you know, go-to like your your go settings. Exactly. The wow. ND filters, I can put the ND filters in all directly from this menu screen, uh -huh. white balance. 
Uh, one cool thing is we go on the right hand side, you can see that little, those little boxes here. Let me tap those. So now I can toggle on and off my assist features. Wow. So you can see the focus guide, my peaking, waveform monitor on and off, uh, vector scope. I'm gonna change it over to my vector scope. Um, or even false and, color, which is like a, a great new mm -hmm. addition uh, to yeah. this level of camera. I don't think we've ever seen false color in a, in a camera at this kind of level of the market before that's really great yeah yeah very very <laughs> exciting because I, I i personally feel like false color should be in every camera <laughs> yeah it's... you know and so i'm really happy to see it you know kind of making its way into stuff like this um very happy for me let's go back real fast i'm gonna go back to the main screen here and uh up in the upper left hand corner you see that little uh film frame and gear i'm gonna mm -hmm. tap that and that's going to take me to this is the meat of the direct touch menu now and this is where i can change everything i can change my sensor mode between oh, wow. you know, super 35 super 16 my recording if i go to slow and fast pre-record um all that stuff i can change that all from from here the camera also this is a good time to also talk about the cool second card functions the camera has oh so, yeah let's talk let's just yeah. so i i yeah. For those that aren't aware yet, the, the camera shoots to uh, the kind of normal SD card uh, form factor, and there right. are slots uh, that are that are housed in the grip in a very That's... very sturdy door that feels <laughs> opens and closes in a very solid and confidence inspiring way. Yeah, it has a nice little clunk like clunk yeah, to it. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> it feels super solid and like it's not it's not you know not going anywhere mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but uh, I gather there are requirements for the cards you for to be able to utilize all the different recording modes that are present in the camera. Yeah, definitely. I can say if you're going to be taking the camera to its full advance and shooting shooting uh, off speed, shooting at 120 frames a second, uh, you're going to want to find a V90 SD card. V90. Um, yes. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> yeah, and definitely. If you're if you're only shooting 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second. Um, you know, a V60 is probably pretty safe, mm. but honestly, sticking, investing in those V90 cards and that way you're fully covered and you won't run into right. any, any issues with, if you do decide to go into slow and fast motion at any point, right. Kind of the way to go. Right. Um, cool. But going back real fast is talking about this, the sub recording stuff is kind of cool in this camera. Cause it's something we haven't had before mm. in, uh, the cinema EOS cameras. I mean, we have the proxy recording, which is it's the same it's you know you're recording onto the main sd card your your full uh your full codec your full um compression rate everything like that mm -hmm. but then you're recording a um xf abc 8-bit 420 proxy so you know low bit rates um you know lots of compression on the the chroma sub sampling right. um but meant it's a proxy it's meant for you know editing sure on systems like that. Right. But we've also included this new sub record mode. What sub recording does is it allows me to, you know, it allows to me to basically record two different codecs at the same time. Mm. So I can be recording like XFABC on the one card right. and I can be re recording uh, H265 onto another oh, wow. card. Wow, both, or, in, both in 10 bit? Uh, yeah. Wow. And, um, or I could be recording, um, in one instance, um, I can be recording 60 P on one card mm -hmm. and 60 I on the other card. Um, Interesting. so there's a couple and there's, there's more, there's more, there's more uh, permutations of it mm -hmm. along the way. So it's not just a straight up proxy that's recording the same, you know, frame rate, same codec or, right. uh, you know, you I record of, 4K on one card, 2K on another. Wow. Um, and like both so, in Canon Log or one with one in Canon mm -hmm. Log, two or three, and one with a LUT burned into it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's great. Exactly. Um, so lots of lots of different recording features are there. And it's kind of thing like for me, like I really see this as a, a great producer, like news gathering. Mm hmm you, you know, knowing you have... You know, yeah. all those like codecs and stuff like that but um auto iso wow first in a cinema eos camera um interesting so if you're shooting in rec 709 
um, you can have uh, you can have auto ISO. Um, and that would be great for, I definitely know, I've run into a lot of our customers who uh, want to do, uh, you know, types of shooting in rapidly changing light, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a concert or, you know, extreme weather event where, you know, clouds and sun are going in and out and, and stuff like that. So that's really good. That's a, I know a lot of people who will probably, you know, want to take advantage of that, um, even though, you know, typically we kind of turn our noses up at anything auto, but it's nice to have the capability for when it's needed. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's restricted in such a way that you, you're going to know that you want to use it right. in the situation you do. You, you, you know, have to not... explicitly turn it on. And... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also it's, it's not available in log, which is really important because huh. right. yeah, if you were to put an auto ISO in log, um, you'd be screwing around in your dynamic range. Right you know, as you move in and out of ISO. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't want that to happen. So, yeah. Well, uh, that's great. Is there, were there any other uh, features or functionality on the camera that, that you wanted to highlight? Um, if, if not, then, you know, I'll say, uh, oh, well, I actually mm -hmm. did want to talk about the IO terminals real quick. Like, yeah, we've definitely. got those mini uh, three pin XLRs. Um, Mm -hmm. Are there going to be adapters to go from like that size to to like a full size XLR? Yeah, probably not not from Canon. Ah. Um, but there's so many. I mean, there's so many third party right um, of those. And I know back from back from the the Red One days, uh, rental houses have right, made so many. Yeah, we uh, have we have them in our rental <laughs> department for sure. Yeah, I personally made hundreds of those cables uh, <laughs> when I was working in rental. So yeah. Right, <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, I think that that's a good overview. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Thanks yeah. so much for joining us, and congratulations on uh, the the launch of the the EOS C70. It looks like a really uh, really fun camera, and also very capable, especially at the price point. So, well done. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Jeff. I. Uh... I love doing this stuff. So thank you very much for inviting me. And I actually really, really do like this camera. Uh, it's like you said, it's a lot of fun to use. It's yeah. easy to use, but it has like all the features of a cinema EOS camera. It just makes them very, very, like it flows very well when you're out there shooting with it. So it does like, um, it, yeah. it, it, it's like a great, if you've used like the EOS R or the, any of the newer R series cameras, like the R5, or the R6, it, it has mm -hmm. the same type of flip out as, uh, swivel uh, tilt screen, which is also very similar to the screen on the C100 Mark II. And so it's, it really is yep. like bringing those two worlds mm -hmm. together in a way that's like, for me, I was just like instantly familiar. I just looked at it right. and knew exactly how to handle it and how to work it. And, you know, a lot of the buttons are in the same place, you know, more mm -hmm. or less, like the ND filters, the waveform monitor button, peaking, zebras, all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to gravitate towards it because, you know, you essentially already know how to use it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, thanks again and uh, have a great rest of your day and stay safe and stay well. Thank you, Jeff. Good seeing you. you bet. Likewise, Paul. Take care.